Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, players of all ages, welcome to the inaugural episode of Spatchcock Nation. Here's what we're going to do. During the crisis, man, we're starving to give you content. People need content. People have been asking for it. So what we're going to do, since we can't be cooking and getting all social close, what we're going to be doing is bringing in some smart-ass guests, some cool people, and basically run down a PTI, direct pull from PTI. With respect to Kornheiser and Wilbon, y'all need to be a guest on the show. So if you're looking for something to do, holler at your boys. How it works is we're going to throw a bunch of different subjects up. We're going to go back and forth. We're going to riff on it. This is awesome because you don't even need to watch it to get the most out of it. You can listen to it, let it run around on YouTube, plug in your headphones, work from home, do it is whatever it is that you do. So our first guest is one of our best guests. Super hot, not just hot looking though she is, super hot around the area, right? This is a super smart marketing leader, uh, executive vice president and boss at Mower, a, a global agency, offices across the country. And we're fortunate enough that one of their offices is here in this house, but she's upstairs. So we are going to get this thing going in a second. But first, Stephanie Crockett, man, tell us what's up. How you do? Doing good, man. You know, not a not a whole heck of a lot new to report to the Spatchcock Nation. Um, living that quarantine life and uh, trying to make the most of it, just working and hanging out here with you. Dope. Love About it. About it. <laughs> so first, the show, limited time, dude. We're going to do one a week during the quarantine. But here's the dealie. Right now, we're going to shout out the Syracuse Clothing mm. Company. Yes. First of all, man. Yes. Shirt might be limited time. The company's not. They're awesome. Oh. During the quarantine, they swung by, dropped this off at the house. I mean, thoughtful shit, man. That's what's yep. up. People yep. taking care of each other. And that's what we're trying to do. No question. Right. Yep. We're, it's the Syracuse way. That's it, baby. So we're going to kick this party off right. The first topic, MFK. Mm. We're going to give you three mm -hmm. people. You've got to either have a long, nice, healthy relationship marriage with. That's one option. The mm -hmm. second option is mm -hmm. you've got to murder them. And the third one is you're going to have a one-night romantic liaison. You feel me? MFK. The options, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and the Tooth Fairy. What you got? Hmm. Okay. You know what? Actually, this is, this is pretty easy. This is pretty easy for me. No question at all out of those three. Like, one of them, not a human, so that that in and of itself kind of starts to roll them out. And I, I got to, I got to, I got to nix the tooth fairy, man. I mean, this is a character, like a little sprite who like runs about and has teeth, like carrying random people's teeth around. Like, I don't want to get up in that business. He's kinky. Well, uh, yeah, but not the kind of kinky I'm feeling. Not the kind of kinky I'm into here. So, um, I gotta, I gotta have, I gotta, I gotta marry my man, Santa. I mean, you know, my feeling on Christmas, it's my, it's my thing. Um, this is a man who isn't going to give you shit about holiday weight. I mean, it's kind of like a requirement of being married to the man. So I'm, I'm on board with that. Um, and, and I, I gotta, I gotta ask the Easter bunny because this is kind of a perfect scenario. Here's a dude who's only in town once a year, my kind of guy. And um, you know what they say about rabbits. So it's going to be fun. Keep it entertaining. And he brings chocolate. So that's it. That's my jam. That's All it. Right, I I can do those you? choices. I'm close, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little bit differently on that. Number mm. one, I'm going to marry Santa, too, because cookies all the time, cookies sure. all the time. Sure. He's got, you that, know, got that group of reindeer. You love the animals. I love animals. Cake mm. by the Aurora Borealis. I'm into that. <laughs> uh, you know, Hallmark movies, too, man. Like the person that I have a healthy marriage with, this mm -hmm. homegirl's into Hallmark movies. So mm. maybe that'll, love, who knows. Love, um, love. So marrying and, and Santa. weakness. But that's where we, uh, that's where we differ. Okay. All right. So I'm definitely going to kill the Easter bunny. Uh, I just ate rabbit last weekend. Yeah. And in a weird kind of an Easter meal of the bunny rabbit. It was, yeah, it was. Oh, it was a brazen for the raisin, man. <laughs> raisin some rabbit for the raisin of our Lord. That's how yes. we do. Very clever. Very so, clever. And somehow like sadistic. Yeah. Yeah. So killing the Easter bunny because whatever, man, we don't need no Easter bunnies around here. Um, I'm definitely going to one night stand it up with the tooth fairy because she knows her way around a bedroom. She's tiny, so she might make, make things look bigger if you get my drift. And she seems that would like help. That she, would help. she seems like yeah. she's into some crazy stuff. So yeah. that's what's up, man. That's my MFK. All right. That is that's interesting. The teeth is interesting. Okay. Um, all right. Let's change it up. Let's go I next. Mean, don't, don't you don't use your teeth, you know what I'm saying? But it's good <laughs> that you got them. Yeah, true. Very important. But again, she's making things feel bigger, which is a, which is a real plus for you. So let's go to the next topic. Um, best song to listen to when you're making out in a car. Now, like envision yourself maybe kind of like 
rolling through the car wash at Delta Sonic. The oh, lights I'm picturing a little, it. A little fuzzy, you know, the little romance. We've all felt that romance. Yeah. Maybe you're hanging out in a parking garage at a hotel. Mm. Maybe there's been a makeup scene there before yeah what, yeah what, what are you feeling we don't what need are you no feeling? camera for this scene you know what i'm saying <laughs> what are you feeling song wise what would be your your song your so I, i'm gonna i'm gonna roll right now with um sit next to me by foster the people it's got a cool little okay. intro like smooths in you're like hey girl mm -hmm. and all of a sudden i'm doing one of these like oh let me put this arm around you you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. move the stick shift a little bit and all of a sudden let's do it <laughs> very interesting okay mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. how about you um, well, I, I gotta go stand by me. I mean, that's, that's our song. That was our wedding song. That's like our, but you know, actually that's kind of stupid. Um, let's switch it up and I'm going to go, I'm going to go Dilemma by Nelly. Uh, boy. Yeah. Well, listen. Yeah. So for, for everyone that's watching, listening, <laughs> um, my wife is, she, she's got a thing for Nelly. I once asked her a question like, Hey, if you had to, can you blame me? Date one celebrity for like a long-term situation. Before I even finished a sentence, she was like, Nelly. Yeah. So, you know, and now <laughs> Nelly's like everywhere in my house. It's Listen, it's crazy. I just, you know, I, I do have a love for Nelly. Um, I don't want you to be suspicious that dilemma is about having an affair. It's don't, don't look into that. Yeah, it's really but... just a sexy song. Dad That's, hugs, yeah. mean mugs, and shoulder shrugs where we're coming from. But you know mm -hmm. what, by the way, Rather we got a, we got a couple shoulder. Nelly CDs up in here. We had a car in the garage, so why don't we just like cut this thing short and go uh check the check the song out? Yeah, I'll, I'll think about it. I'm still finishing my drink here. Yeah. All right. Okay, okay. So then let's move on to the next topic. What <laughs> we're talking about next, all right, is you have to bring a late night TV host home to play drunk Yahtzee mm. all night. All you're doing is drinking uh, and rolling them dice. Shake them up, uh, shake them up, shake them up, shake them. All right, first of all, can we talk a little bit about quarantine Yahtzee? Because you know, this is my game. I believe I'm right now quarantine Yahtzee seven to one feeding you, just for, so making sure that everybody recognizes who the Yahtzee champion is in this house. But to answer your question, <laughs> So many great late night hosts. Like part of me would have to think like John Oliver because he's so funny, but I got to go James Corden. I got to go James Corden because you know my love of a sing-along and especially the Broadway tunes. Like James is going to want to like come up with songs for every role. It's like, give me a full house. Like I really... Oh, this for is, sure. I got to go, James. I got to yeah, go, James. Yeah, and I can so see you guys funny. firing up Spotify and singing yes. show together drunk, yes. which you and I have done after a Yahtzee match before. <laughs> so, yeah, you've delivered some beatings to me in Yahtzee. I'm not going to lie about that. Speaking of beatings, some, by the way. Was that some beatings or was that? Y'all might have noticed uh, my mm. man here is fashion, sporting a black eye. So uh, we were social distancing and spending some time with the family, and I ended up playing basketball with my 12-year-old nephew. Homeboy drove the lane hard, got me with his super hard skull. Um, so, you know what? Uh, he's a, a, a heck of an athlete, a competitor. So I'm proud of the war wound. And then I took him deep in wiffle ball. Nothing makes you prouder than taking your 12 year old nephew deep with a Other hard swing. You know what I'm saying? Saying the word deep a couple of times and describing an interlude with your 12 year old nephew. And I was there as a witness, and I'm not now really sure. I'm a, now I just made it creepier. What, what type of creepiness? I think it was creepy. You're like a character. You're like the villain on an SVU uh, okay. episode, I, man. Listen, All right, let not, me get back to my not answer. true. All I'm saying is I'm, I think you're taking some liberties there and giving yourself the W. That's all I'm saying. Keep going. All right. All right. Late we'll night go, talk we'll show. We'll check the tape. So late Yahtzee. night talk shows. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So, um, you know, there's a lot of funny ones there. Jimmy Kimmel is pretty funny, and I like that. Um, yeah, Samantha B would great. be a good choice, but I get sick of the dick jokes after a couple minutes. Um, yeah, well. So yeah. then I, I think about Jimmy Fallon, but he's going to overlap at my jokes, and I, I don't want that either. So <laughs> I'm going to roll out with my You man usually Cole. really enjoy that, though, when somebody overlaughs at you. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, so I'm going to go Conan, because he won't overlaugh. Hopefully oh, he'll bring his homeboy yeah, Andy, because they're funny. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm going to roll like that, because... Why the hell wouldn't you do that? Yeah. So, okay. Um, yeah. So, f speaking of uh, the next question, to my nice haircut, it's a beautiful furry animal that's walked across the stage. Oh, boy. that's true. Yeah. So here, here's the deal, man. What's the worst haircut you've had ever, and why? Oh God, so many, so so many. I I remember. I believe it's my fifth grade, maybe fourth grade picture. Where I've got like a feathered business, but. 
without question, while odd to imagine now looking at what my hair is today that I, uh, well, thank you. I, uh, I used to rock the perms back in the day. I e. So like middle school, probably like. So did half of NWA. So don't be that ashamed. Well, <laughs> very true. Very true. They had the, they, they did have that. They had the soul glow rocking though. I didn't, I didn't get to do the soul glow. I had, it was like a burnt orange, very carrot toppy, like, like a super frizzy. I think that's probably the time that my sister, Emily, who so lovingly does that to this day when I'm on a frizzy, super humid day and starts busting out songs from, from Annie. Mm -hmm. And I just like walk in the room and she's like, the sun will come out. And I'm like, oh, all right. Yeah. So I think Thanks, that's, uh, that's, yeah. Oh yeah. She's super, super lovely. Uh, yeah, that's definitely, I got to go perm middle school. What okay. about you? And your sister is lovely. So she is. Uh, she is. I, I'm, I'm a, I got two haircuts. I mean, I might even say right now, man, because yeah, like the COVID hair is COVID a little, hair is little like shag. just you know what I'm saying? Like you, it up. you can't see my blonde highlights as well. I don't know, man. Blondes. So yeah, they're yeah. blonde, blonde uh, highlights. Two bad ones. So like, uh, might want to put that hat back on. I think I had like um, mm. a mo haircut, and my friends started calling me mo, and the rest of school did. That sucked. Um, but also, too, at one point, I was getting like a nice little fade up the side and back then you'd have like the three lines but i went a different direction i had the barber shaving some nike swooshes on each side Shut of my head man right up yeah, i did air matt reed baby oh That's my gosh up. i cannot believe i haven't seen a picture of that you were like look at me girls i do sports i'm a jock no. i have my head matching with my the sneaks, nike son. air oh force ones God. on the feet swooshes uh, on the head Hey, oh my that was, Lord. that was, that oh was bad, God. Dude. I am definitely reaching out to your mother and getting an image of this, like immediately. I need to, I need to get on that. that All right. If you get it, we'll share something. it. We'll share it on the funk. If you oh do. yeah. Yeah. That's everybody needs to enjoy that. Everybody All needs right. to enjoy that. Um, okay. Let's go next topic. Um, oh, this is a good one. Last meal on death row. So you are getting into some serious shit. You probably just killed the Easter bunny, ate him. Uh, and now you're, uh, you're making your way to death row. Give me like your final meal. What, what would it be? What would it be? You know, I have to admit, I've thought about this a, a number of times. <laughs> um, I've been in a jam and been like, well, if I'm going to go down for this, at least I'll get a sick dinner out of it. So my, uh, I'm going to start out with, um, I'm going to get a dozen Bar Harbor oysters, right? Of course. Of because course. they're briny and salty at West coast, left coast, best coast thing. I'm going to roll with that. And then um, over the course of the meal, I'm going to make sure I've got like at least a six pack of either like a beta Amber. Mm, oh, no, uh, no, no, no. You know what? Wham Wham from Prison City. Oh, yes. Got a bunch of yeah, those tall boys. That is boys. phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, I don't even like main, beer. And I like that stuff is amazing. My main course, like I'm not going to do a salad because salad's what my food eats. Um, I'm going to get the mac and cheese that you and I made on the cooking show. Because uh, that mac and cheese is just so mm -hmm. fly. Yeah, um, it's amazing. That's my side dish. And the main okay. course, I'm going to do a bone-in cowboy cut ribeye, mm. almost like medium rare to rare with mm -hmm. um, salt and pepper on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then for dessert, I'm going to go with the aforementioned Emily Boyer's chocolate oh, pecan yes. pie. Yes. And then a cello shot to end it up. And then yep. that is by Cruel World. That is a See very complete one. meal. That's a very complete meal. Yeah, I... Um, Oh God, this, I, I've actually also thought about this a few times. Um, I'm going to start off with the uh, alligator cheesecake from Giacomo's, Ooh, right? Like sounds yeah. crazy, amazing, yes. like savory cheesecake with alligator sausage and crawfish. Great. Oh my God. It's so fucking good. Oh, it's so uh, good. I definitely got to go fried chicken because that is totally my thing. Mm -hmm. Giacomo's actually makes a really good fried chicken, but um yeah i gotta go fried chicken and then i'm gonna say the macaroni and cheese that i make because the oh. mac and we made on your show was like me making it and you you, you i think you were supervising it. it i think you were supervising it well i am a very good supervisor that yeah. is true of most that's of your true. activity that's but, the best uh, part of quarantine are your supervision skills i've been yeah, enjoying aren't that. they see i really Sweet. get to shine at yeah. home with you and all the projects and the super for sure and I'm gonna I'm gonna finish it off with a big fat glass of chocolate milk, like just a beautiful. It's kind of dessert and beverage all in one. It's like it's phenomenal. And somewhere in there, I'm sure there's gonna be like just a spoonful of peanut butter. 
Because why wouldn't there be? That's your thing. That's chocolate and peanut butter. I remember at one point, yeah. like, I thought you were leaning in to kiss me all romantically, but I had some chocolate and peanut butter ice cream on my chin. I'm like, oh, yeah, sit next to me. It's about to go down. And then all of a sudden, no, it was just uh, the chocolate that's peanut a peanut butter. That's a true story. That's a so true story. I probably got brought into that death row situation from a taco-related crime, which is why I left tacos off of my I list. was, You know, it's funny you say that. I was going to say, because I know you absolutely loved the, like, lobster mini tacos at yeah. our wedding at the Oak Room. And I thought... Why is he not going with a taco in this situation? The, be but the beef tongue tacos at San Miguel, I would think about oh, that that's, too. Yes, but I know speaking you of these. some crazy weird stuff, what's the weirdest drunk you've ever been? And mm. what were you drunk on? Like, tell us about that. Mm -hmm. um, weirdest drunk I've ever been has got to be, it's actually was like not from a typical like liquor drink, but um, an unintentional drunk off of cough syrup. Sipping that purple drink. Yeah, yeah, it was not my plan. I had been out of town for the weekend with my girl Fishy, with Alex. Yeah, we had been yeah. down uh, visiting our friend Danielle. We were at West Point. That was kind of our thing back in college. We're all right, details all right. There. But anyway, so we had come back to my parents' house. We were like, tell my mom all about it. And I had been sick, like a bronchitis or something. So I run upstairs and I'm not really paying attention to dosages. I don't get like the little cup out. I just like take the bottle and throw it back. And uh, my sister, my oldest sister, Diana, uh, must have been home at the time. And I, next thing I know, I'm like passed out on the couch. She comes downstairs and is like, what are you doing? And she's got this like beautiful curly hair. I'm laying on the couch and I'm like, you she look like a ballerina. I was like hallucinating. Yeah. Like, I don't know. That was like the weirdest drunk I've ever had. And I've had like absinthe and other random things. That was definitely the most like bizarre feeling drunk for sure. You and look like, like a ballerina. Yeah, she looked, so like, sweetly. Like, like in a tutu. Yeah. Yeah. She had that Barbara Walters phase going on in the air. Like yeah. you were just like, it, it was an apparition, man. Yeah. Oh, I mean, she's it. always surrounded by she is. She's got butterflies and rainbows and things. Yeah. She does. So what about you? Obviously, you've had lots of opportunity for weird weird. Yeah. Jobs. Yeah. Well, you know yeah. what? Like my, my homeboy, Jimmy Delia from Pizza Man Pub, always talks about the will to be weird. And I'm all about that. Like, yes, so are you going on weird adventures and stuff. So yeah. I've drank, uh, you know, um, I, I'm going to say the, the substance is absinthe. And I can think of different times. Mm -hmm. Like sure. um, one time Jimmy and I split a bottle of absinthe, which you're not supposed to split bottles of them. So that led to some, yeah, that seems like some adventures. Excessive, excessive. Yeah. Uh, excessive is in the eye of the beholder. You know what I'm saying? Anything's, anything's moderate if you're brave enough. Mm. So, um, Jeez. Yeah, but that wasn't Such it. Such a another, philosophy. Yeah. Then yeah. Another, another time, um, absinthe, <laughs> you and I were in a, uh, vampire password speakeasy in New Orleans. Yes, that we was were. pretty interesting. That was the, just like less than a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. The weirdest might have been though. Uh, um, you mentioned Alex Odorizzi earlier. Um, the night before it was like my 30th birthday, and okay. I started drinking Red Bull and Absence. Man, I graduated from RBVs to the elusive RBA. Yeah, son, I didn't know that you went RBA on yeah, that. Dude, I thought RBAs, that was RBB man. night. That explains the way you were the, the next day. The RBA is a, that's a baller drink. So yeah, that is day, that's tough to come by. You're catching that residual RBA action, and all of a sudden, Alex and I find ourselves commandeering a golf cart and driving down Park Avenue in Rochester. And she's oh like clipping God. people's ankles. We got paintings in the back. We're oh drunk. My God. Like meep meep. She's like meeping with her mouth. Like oh my God, it was hysterical. Yo. Yeah, because they didn't have a horn, so she's like meep meep, get out of the way. <laughs> don't, oh, mess with, don't mess with hysterical. the absinthe, man. That's that's yeah, what's up. That is that was funny. Um. All right, let's shift direction. Let's let's go next topic. Um, biggest crush you had when you were younger that you're embarrassed by now could be like celebrity, could be like something. Yeah, who was your who was your jam well, back in the day? Like, could be celebrity, could be some random dude. Yeah, I, something. I've got a I've got a life of shame, so I mean, you know, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll own it. My um, so I two crushes come to mind. My first crush that I ever had was on a. Um, music teacher I had I ended up being good friends with her husband later he played minor league baseball as a good dude um, and I didn't know what a crush was I just felt weird like my face was flushed I felt nervous around her I'm sure she couldn't tell I'm sure uh, she absolutely yeah. I'm sure but, everybody knew oh totally what was but going on that there. crushes yeah. though you think like your crush doesn't know you exist so I'm hoping there was some of that but I'm sure it's not I'm sure she's like yo that crazy kid in my class like that idiot has a cooking show now <laughs> um, but from a celebrity standpoint actually I gotta say like because we were around the same age um, when the TV show Punky Brewster came out, I'm like, who is this crazy oh. person? Different colors, like laughing and venturing. Like, you know, I was like, man, there's something cool about, about that. So 
you know, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Punky Brewster and and okay. um, my violin teacher when I was a youngin. All right. So just Where so you, you know, uh, Punky Brewster has, by the way, appeared in a Hallmark movie. I'm just let your judgment of the Hallmark. I'm just throwing that out there. The Hallmark movie okay. just went up two dial two dial notches. There you go. See, yeah. see, hey. I mean, you're gonna grow an appreciation for. Merry it. Christmas, mother. There you. <laughs> All right. So, oh God, my um. My first crush, like the first boy I ever remember, elementary school, probably like third, fourth grade or something. I had a big crush on Donny Osmond. Like wow. of the Osmond family. Yeah, yeah. Like like Mr. Perfect Straight Teeth. I think like they, they can't yeah, have very... sex with their but can't the, the Osmonds can't have sex with their fifty unless they marry marry a sibling, right? Isn't it? Yeah, I don't I don't like know that? anything about I don't, I don't know, know about that. I mean, Google um, that shit. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's, I, that's probably something I, I don't want to know. Listen, I was a huge fan. This is like, again, I was. So were you like screaming school. and like, like throwing your, your, your trapper keeper on the stage when he came Okay. Out? I will say my first concert ever of all time was seeing the Osmonds at the New York State Fair with my whole family. Uh, but I was, a, I was a super fan, man. I had like a, like a Donny Osmond doll, like a Ken doll who like played with Barbie and had like, you know, hung out in the Barbie dream house. And uh, he wore this like lovely, like an orchid, like a lavender, definitely a blouse. It was a satin. Technical or dream coat, dude. Didn't he rock that of. thing too? No, no, it was this lavender. Oh, I thought he had a little. Satin. Uh, <laughs> no, right. know that. he had a little microphone and like patent leather shoes and he Ooh. danced and sang about. Yeah, big, big fan. That's, that's a pretty bad, pretty bad. Crush. Note to and self. I moved on to Michael Jackson, which was far more respectable. But Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was gonna yeah. say maybe well, um early maybe... Mike, like thriller Michael Jackson, not yeah, like yeah, pre like bad trouble, emo, creepiness. white well, guy with the love and the kids cut. Michael. Yeah, like I was gonna say, maybe I should um think about dressing up as Donny Osmond for Halloween next year, see if I can make a little special night. I'm not I mean? sure that you could pull off the lavender Ooh. satin blouse. Oh! All right. All right, yeah. let me change gears on you no, then. Um, no. Here's a here's a this or that, right? So okay. you have can either pick one of two options. You can go clothes shop. You're gonna have some drinks. You got people with you having drinks. You're going okay. clothes shopping with Lady Gaga as your personal stylist at a thrift store, or you're going to a farmer's market with Bobby Flay drinking beers. And you're either way, you're getting ready to dress for a big party or hook it up for a big party. So okay. where are you going with that stuff? I, I mean, this this is. I probably a foregone conclusion. This is Gaga all the way. I am, I'm, she's a genius. I love her. You know that it would be like the most amazing experience. This woman wears meat uh, as clothing. Like she's got this style. She makes it look good too. She does. Art. She makes it, <laughs> she's, take it easy. She makes anything look good. You know, she'd have like little people fetching us cocktails as we're walking around the store. You know, when we entertain, like I figure Bobby Flay and you can go off and take care of making the food and the business. When I, I'm like the window dressing. I need to like show up for the people. They come to see me. Gaga's got to, you know, outfit me. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you're pretty really true, no matter what. I wouldn't but mind. I, yeah, little Gaga style. Yeah. And I, I think have guys, to bring my girl Dole Bear with me though. I mean, yeah, I could I think, never do that without Lisa. It would be the most amazing experience to have her. I think you yeah. guys have a dope ass time. I get that. I'm, I'm still, I'm going to go flay, even though people be taking pictures of him and stuff. He's a funny ass dude and a bit of an asshole in a funny way. Yeah. So yeah. I like that because he'll be talking heckling shit, but I'll be getting to learn all sorts of stuff about it. Um, but he's the type of dude too. I feel like at a party, like when you see people like beat Bobby flay and the throwdown and stuff like that, he's a guy mm -hmm. that seems like you can chill with it. Like, um, and Bobby, if you're listening, you know, you should jump on a spatchcock nation. We've got a few slots open. Yeah, uh, he clearly would be a great person to hang out with, have cocktails. Yeah. He's a Mick. He's like our people. He's oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. one of the family, man. Yeah. Can't, yeah. can't be faded, dude. Can't be no, faded. No, no, no. Um, okay, let's bring it down to, to kind of current times, a little reality. So here we are. We're on week four, I think, of being quarantined and stuck in the house. Um, what has been the, give me like the best and the worst part of quarantine for you? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the worst and get that, get that over with. So the worst part is, it turns out, I am an animal that's not built for captivity, man. I just, I can't be caged, dude. It's driving that's, me uh, that's true, cray sorry. cray. Yeah. Um, so the worst part about that is like mentally, I feel a little bit crushed. And like um, Alex, are the part, my partner in, in Spatchcock is keeping me afloat with cool creative ideas. And so are the people that I work with and stuff. But still like, 
and so is my awesome wife. And I don't know how she hasn't murdered me yet. Um, so the worst part is I question. keep yeah. avoiding falling into this trap that I know I can. But the best part, though, besides the two cats and um, hanging out with you, uh, which has been obviously the most special part of it. Um, but the best part, I think, is like people, friends reaching out, like Zoom happy hours, uh, you know, that stuff I love, like the COVID-19 I'm, I'm gaining right now, I don't love, but um, the connections and people like reassuring. It's one thing when you're drunk at a bar, hugging people over a glass of wine and being like, oh my God, we're going to be friends forever. Now you're seeing who those friends are and that shit is yeah. priceless. So that's where I'm yeah. at. Yeah. Yep. I feel you. It has been really interesting to see how it kind of brings out the best of people. And I think that's what is so amazing to observe. I, um, for me, worst part, same, you know, I just, I miss people. I clearly get my energy from being around other people. You know, I like, I like True. big audiences. I like, you know, whether it's my own microphone I bring to the table or Donnie's little mini mic. Yeah, little you know, Donnie. I'm sure, he, little, I'm little sure Donnie's, Donnie. Donnie's mic isn't that many, but. We should hook him up with the Tooth Fairy. Yeah, yeah. Right? See? See how that little connection there. Anyway, uh, so, yeah. So I'm definitely struggling a little bit. I feel like my energy level is a little bit down. Um, you know, I'm falling asleep on the at like 8.45, 9 o'clock most nights. I just, I feel like my energy has been a little bit sucked. Um, but the most amazing thing has been, yeah, twofold. Without question, um, connecting with friends in a way. I have these amazing groups of girlfriends, my college friends in particular, who were all kind of in a little different places. We've been communicating, just text messages. We're Zooming at least once a week, but it's been like this ongoing uh, connection and it's yeah. really kind of changed the dynamic of the relationships just a little bit because they've been a little bit more, you know, just typical life is going on. So they've been a little more infrequent. And um, I really love the ongoing kind of daily you know, conversation and connection with them. Um, but more so, I think it's been about the way that um, my company and the people that I work with have responded. I am so lucky to work for this amazing place, which I've always known is amazing. Um, and it's always been just the right feel. It's why I've been there 16 years is because of the, the people and the place that it is and the value and everything else. But it has just continued to reinforce my feeling about that. I work with amazing people. I love every single person I get to see every day. And I miss them so much. I just think about them all the time. I just wondering how they're doing and like being able to see them on Zoom is in incredible. But I just am really proud of the way that everybody is rallying around each other, that we're really, you know, being sensitive and flexible about everybody's own personal different situation and what they're all dealing with. Everybody's working their asses off and doing so in these completely like bizarre scenarios Amen. and are able to continue to, to just make it through. And I hate to say this, but Eric will be proud, like press on and just do our thing. But, um, I, it makes me appreciate everyone so much and appreciate being able to be part of that group of people. It just, I'm overwhelmed that, that, by it. That's well said. I mean, and you work with great creative people. Yeah. You're showing love. Much love to you. Much love to the people listening out here. Uh, here's the thing, man. We're going to be sharing these things. Tune in your dial to spatchcockfunk.com. Yeah. Check it on YouTube. Subscribe. Listen, man, Spatchcock Nation is like Onyx, heavyweight and still undisputed. Thanks for coming, y'all. You knew he had to flex. Yeah, yeah. Love y'all. Bye. Bye. Yeah, we don't